the Bayou Tapestry, a remarkable history of preservation. For its sheer size alone, 70 meters or 230 feet in seven sections, the Bayou Tapestry is an awesome accomplishment. For instance, the seams between the panels are almost unperceivable. Being made completely of wool thread on linen backing, it is technically a work of embroidery, and the word tapestry acts as a misnomer. The story of its preservation throughout time is just as, if not more, incredible than the object itself. The tapestry was made shortly after the Norman invasion of England in 1066 in commemoration of the event as a gift to William, Duke of Normandy, later to be christened the Conqueror, from his brother, the Bishop Odo of Bayeux. It served as a monumental piece of early propaganda which portrays the Battle of Hastings and conquest of the throne from Edward the Confessor to William via King Harold as seen from a purely Norman perspective. This viewpoint of the secular nature of the Bayeux Tapestry as artwork, historical document, and political propaganda is relatively recent, circa 1973. The only surviving description in English of the course of events, although many survive in Latin, states the English perspective of the Norman forces' victory. Quote, the Frenchmen held possession of the field as God granted to them for the people's sins, end quote. It is believed that the tapestry was made in southern England in the year 1082. From that point on, it is presumed that it was brought out and hung upon the walls in the nave of the Cathedral of Notre Dame of Bayeux only once a year, according to an inventory of the cathedral made in 1476, quote, on the day of relics and throughout the octave, end quote. This is how the Bayeux Tapestry survived nearly 500 years and the multiple fires during those years. With the French Revolution, the tapestry was almost used for a wagon cover and a carnival float depicting the goddess of reason. In 1803, Napoleon attempted to use it to rally support for an invasion of England, which never occurred. During 1812, it was mounted and wound between two mechanical cylinders, which did severe damage. It was not until 1842 that the Bayeux Tapestry was finally mounted behind glass in a separate room of a public library. It remained there until 1913, when it was finally returned to the old bishop's palace. It spent World War II housed in the cellar of the Louvre, narrowly escaping possession by the Nazis. In 1948, it was enclosed in a case in Bayeux once more. There is no evidence of any drawing upon the linen itself, although it is thought that there were at least preliminary sketches made and possibly placed under the linen during the embroidery process. The original colors used are primarily darker tones, focusing on blacks, blues, and greens. During the medieval period, oranges and reds were used for repairs, and nearer to the 19th century, softer tones dominate the repairs, such as yellow and more pastel hues.
When viewed from both front and back, it becomes clear to restorers that the hues of the wool threads had hardly faded over the course of almost 1,000 years. The colors are almost aligned with modernist practices in that they are non-naturalistic and seem to be picked at random. It is believed that the narrative in Latin that appears on the tapestry is the product of both oral and written sources. The actual embroidery work is the product of multiple different artisans. In places, the borders portray subplots, fables, or forebodings of events upcoming. An alternate name of the tapestry is the Tapestry of Queen Matilda, for reasons which are not clear. Matilda may have been the daughter of the conquered King Harold, or the wife of William the Conqueror, or, I posit, both. Perhaps the missing panel is the royal wedding? Question mark. Even though little effort was made in the Bayeux's environmental preservation until the past hundred years, as evidenced by stains and iron salts, it has survived remarkably unscathed. Both ends have been repaired significantly, and the final panel is missing its threads. They can only be discerned by what remains of the needle holes. Upon further examination, remnants of the original fibers have been retained. It was not until the tapestry's cleaning, study, and remounting during 1982 to 1983 that any large-scale preservation environment was created in an effort of preservation until the present age when at last it could be displayed in a sealed viewing case with lighting which spans two parallel walls in a U-shape room. This is a marked improvement considering it was once hung in a small darkened room of the monastic deanery off to one side for special viewing only upon request.